Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about algorithms, computer functions, and social control. So what are algorithms? According to Merriam-Webster, algorithms are a set of steps that are followed in order to solve a mathematical problem or to complete a computer process. So it's essentially a set of steps, set of steps involved in the computer process or mathematical problem. A procedure for solving a mathematical problem, so a procedure, a set of steps, in a finite number of steps that are frequently involves repetition of an operation. Computer process with steps, um, procedure often repeated uh, with that loops around and completes a computer operation. So it, algorithm has a pretty straightforward uh, definition in the context of programming and computers. Here's a little bit of my take and further examples on it. So algor algorithms are components of software programs that handle some kinds of operations. So you might be familiar with the spell checker of a program such as Microsoft Word. Once you start typing a word, uh, the program will tell you, uh, will highlight, underline in red the word if it's not spelled correctly. And you can, this is the spell checker algorithm. It's a component of the program that carries out an operation, series of steps to identify a problem and um, complete the solution. It also needs to loop around because every time you type a new word, the program has to check that new word to see if it's spelled correctly. As computer programs, algorithms can be automated and based on machine learning. So they can be automated in the sense that any computer program can be automated. That's the whole nature of computers. If they're left on, the computer program can turn on at a certain time, turn off at another time, uh, and so on. And also based on machine learning, which is another word here for artificial intelligence. Often these terms are used interchangeably. And that's the idea of computer programs acting based on existing data and new incoming existing data either numeric data, textual data, photo image data, and so on. Uh, in the case of the spell checker of the Microsoft Word uh, or other similar software, uh, the algorithm does not need to be based on machine learning, but it could. So it generally uses a, a dictionary, a dictionary of a list of words and how they are spelled. And essentially, if a word you write is not in the dictionary, so that's the rule or the set of steps, if word typed not in dictionary, then highlight the word. That's exactly the, the they call the pseudocode, the programming code um, for this kind of algorithm. And it's not based on machine learning, but it could be based on machine learning if it is if they create an algorithm that just checks all the documents that people write and see how they're spelling. And maybe actually then a word spelled such as this one here, what you instead of what you um, or what are you is maybe not going to get highlighted because it's actually already uh, spelled this way in by somebody else. So the computer or the algorithm can learn how other people are spelling words and how the spells are changing. That's kind of part of the beauty, I guess, a part of the efficiency uh, of the these machine learning algorithms. But algorithms do not all have to be uh, based on machine learning. Some other examples, uh, identifying customers that have visited the store once a week on average, uh, or identifying which neighborhoods has most crimes and when. Uh, often these, now, these kinds of algorithms nowadays are based on machine learning approach. So every time there's new data coming in, new data of uh, retail up, uh, customers coming in, new data of maybe crimes for a police department, uh, the information gets updated and new measurements are created, new uh, assessments are made based on the new data and so on. So algorithms are based on rules and models of how to process data and make decisions. And I write this to emphasize that it's both the, uh, we can kind of call it the software and the hardware, but also it's not just about a computer function. It's not just a neutral, sort of physical, um, singularly 
manifestation of something that has to be a certain way. They are rules and models. They are ways to, to visualize and interpret how data is to be processed and how decisions are to, to be made. So for example, there are, there are algorithms for evaluating teacher performance. And these algorithms have certain rules or certain uh, measurements that it takes. And it, certain measurements are weighted differently. So for example, maybe how often the teacher arrives uh, on time or late to the classroom or the average uh, scores of the students of the teacher and so on. All of these measurements may go into an algorithm that weighs them and then maybe adds them or multiplies them in a certain way and then gives a measurement of the teacher performance. Therefore, the algorithms are very much not only the automated process of the computer, but also the rules that guide that automated process. What, what, what are the measurements selected? Why are these selected? Why are these given a certain weight? And so on. So it gets very complicated. Uh, predicting whether a person will commit a crime based on measurements selected as useful or valuable. Um, why, or maybe not just a person or a neighborhood, how are we predicting? How good is the prediction? What are the measurements that uh, go there to make this prediction? And so on. So this, um, the algorithms can get very complicated because there's rules of what gets selected, what is relevant, what's used for what's valuable. You can see these are value judgments. They're not just uh, a physics or a computer science. They're, lit they're really value judgments of what's what's good and what's bad to use and putting into an automated uh, functional form for the computers to process. Algorithms as social control. So algorithms can serve as a form of social control when they or it uh, determines actions in a group or domain of the population. And by, by this definition, the higher the group, then the more the social control and the more on the social aspect of it. Uh, so search engines, news feeds of social media, teacher evaluation systems, as we we're just discussing, they're all forms of social control because, well, first they are controlling, they're controlling one's behavior in the sense that it's making determination of the teachers that get a pay raise, the teachers that are going to be fired, uh, and so on, or it makes a determination of what you get to see as a result of your search engine, as a result of your social media interaction. So it is not totally controlling, but it is at least attempting to control uh, your actions and often indeed does point you in certain directions. Uh, now, the, there are may, many issues with these algorithms as they are uh, applied to the population broadly. So first, they're secret and opaque. Um, if perhaps we knew the individual knows how they are being controlled, they would even agree with it because they are, the sites are giving you good information or the assessment is telling you what you need to focus on and improve on. But the problem is that they are secret and opaque and we don't know what they're doing. We don't know what characteristics they are considering, what criteria they are using to evaluate us. Um, so that's a big problem. Uh, there is a widespread impact on people. Once again, they do lead people in certain directions. Uh, maybe the people don't even realize so, and that's kind of a problem. So, and they are really widespread. They are forms of social control as they are widespread in use among the population. There are also questionable definitions of success. Essentially, the a criteria for success may not be the same for the source and the target. So the people that create the algorithms, uh, for example, the people developing the teacher evaluation system, maybe they are concerned about, um, you know, their their own job and they don't want to get fired because of um, certain public pressure and so on. Well, the teacher maybe has different kind of criteria. They're concerned about uh, the the children themselves, right, and um, and so on. Um, for example, in the case of Google or social media, let's say Facebook, they're often concerned about uh, they're concerned about marketing and giving you something that you may want to buy, and but you most of the time may have different 
kind of uh, wishes um, and not necessarily uh, financial. Also, another set of issues, potential issues, that are pernicious feedback loops. So often these emphasize existing patterns of bad things and they can go into vicious cycles. So maybe they can go into positive cycles too, but they can also go into vicious cycles. So for example, you know, if there's a, in society group A and group B and group A likes one a political party or one set of things and group B likes another political party or another set of things, the algorithms notice that and then they give to A what A wants and only what A wants and gives to B what B wants and only that. And that then can drive uh, these groups of people in a population apart. And this is also no, you may have heard the term filter bubble. Uh, and all the are kinds of um, and the problem is that they increase conflict among people. Uh, these ideas here are coming from Kathy O'Neill. Uh, she has this book, uh, Weapons of Math Destruction, How Big Data Increases Inequality and Threatens Democracy. There are a number of books out there talking about these issues with algorithms, algorithms of oppression uh, by Safia Noble. There is also Automating Inequality by Virginia Banks. You can see videos, interviews online. There's a lot of research on that as well that uh, you may be interested in if you want to um, search more about this. So let's take a look here at the example of Google and Google's algorithm namely Google's search algorithm known as PageRank. So PageRank is Google's algorithm, um, which of the google.com website, which cross searches for all websites available on the internet. So google.com, Google, let's just kind of remember, this is a computer program, computer software. It's a company, but, and it's a computer program as well. Uh, so this computer program, which has this algorithm known as page rank. It then indexes, organizes all searches for all the websites available on the internet, then organizes them based on the amount of links to each website. So the more links, the higher the rank. So say you have website A, website A only has three links to it by some other websites uh, on the internet. So it gets a value of 3.3%. However, website B has 38 links to it. So it gets a much higher score than website A. And then website E has eight links to it. And so what happens is um, when someone makes a search, the pages with the keywords of the search are ranked with the page rank algorithm. So you put a search uh, on the Google box, you're looking for pink pants. You wanna get some pink pants. And then it'll search for all the websites, of course, that have these keywords. So there is something about keywords there as well. And, and there's some websites with uh, words and some websites with uh, pink pants drawn and so on. And the Google's algorithm uses this page ranking to sort, right? To sort uh, which sites go first, which sites go later. So generally the sites with the most links to are going to be listed on top okay and that's a little bit of how page rank algorithm works now the thing is there are numerous other criteria in the algorithm to determine the pages to be shown and how they are ranked the alg the google's algorithm gets changed every year multiple times a year uh, therefore it's not just it's not just listing how um, how many web links are to each page. Uh, the algorithm uses, first of all, the keywords and how they interpret the keywords that are put into the uh, search box of the Google program. Um, there are different ways to do that matching. Uh, sometimes, for example, let's say you're, you're working for a, looking for a newspaper, you type newspaper. Well, a newspaper site uh, may not actually have the newspaper word in it or not very much. So how does the algorithm look for these keywords and how it looks for synonyms or how does it actually capture what the user wants is its own um, a set of, has its own set of difficulties and complexities. The Google algorithm, the search engine algorithm also uses location of users. So it's going to list things first that are closer to you 
uh, rather than farther away. So that's another criteria. Uh, the, your own previous search and browsing history. Okay, so let's make, I need to high emphasize a point here. Note that often when people are using the internet, they are going through somehow Google. Uh, Google owns Gmail, which many people have Gmail and all their email is owned by Google um, and seen by Google, or at least much of it. They have the web browser. Okay, the web browser is its own program. So once people are using the web Chrome web browser, which actually really, there's almost no logo at all, and it's hard to even see on it which kind of browser you're using. The Chrome web, web browser records every site that a person goes to. And that is saved by the Google servers and the Google system, the Google business. And then, so this is, oh, actually this is the symbol for Google Chrome. So you have the browser and you have the site itself. So this is the Google site, the search engine, the, the computer program and the mail. So Google has an enormous access to the sites and the browsing behavior of individuals all around the planet, not just the, the US actually, all around the world. So it's huge access to a person's data. So they have that data, they record that data um, and they use it to suggest people their information because they think that it's going to be a best for them and people are going to like that. Uh, now, political affiliation, is that used? Now here the story gets a little bit more complicated and maybe controversial because it's more difficult to uh, analyze. But the point that we just raised before is that these algorithms are opaque. We don't know what's going on with these algorithms. We don't know how they search, how they function uh, and how they're controlling the information that we see. And there are uh, some evidence that these algorithms are biased, surprise, surprise. And in particular, Google's algorithm, which I do think is more surprising because I think people uh, think of Google as a very objective company that is just putting out the most objective content that every single person will want at a, the time of the search. But Google's algorithm has a history of emphasizing extremist content in autocomplete and in how they order the results. Um, and we kind of noticed that before there's this emphasis of building on existing inequalities on existing conflicts, and then you can get into pernicious or vicious feedback loops. There's also evidence that negative autocomplete suggestions can increase clicks to those suggestions between five to 15 times compared to neutral terms, right? So if there's a kind of a negative, um, a valence, psychological valence to the uh, content, the words, they increase clicks to it. So Google can choose to either remove or downplay the role of these negative autocompletes and so on. So do they do it? Do they not do it? Search engine programmers decide the kind of information that will be shown and how it will be ranked to users. So often it is just uh, our machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms are conceived as a black box that you cannot know what's going on inside and you cannot know what comes out or you just see what comes out at the end. But that's not entirely true because programmers can manipulate. And in fact, that's what they do. That's their job uh, to manipulate the algorithms, to tweak them, to emphasize certain characteristics, to dump emphasize other characteristics so that is up to them uh, to determine. And these, the algorithms are written by people and therefore they are these rules and the models that reflect our own uh, values. And you can see more information about this on, on uh, resources on the internet. Um, and uh, we'll leave this for now. I'll see you next time.